don't have to be a pro-life activist to see that. Kermit Gosnell is perhaps the most prolific serial killer in American history. You better win. So welcome back to The Lifehouse. This weekend saw the release of the much anticipated Gosnell movie and it's made an incredible impact in the States. And with us to discuss the movie is Neve Vreen. Neve, first of all, who is Kermit Gosnell and why is he so significant in the pro-life debate? So Kermit Gosnell is an abortionist. Uh, he was a late-term abortionist in, in Philadelphia, in the US. And I remember very vividly the first time I read his name or the first time I heard about him. Because in 2011, I think in January, I was, when I was answering emails late and with the time difference between the United States and something caught my eye just before I was going to go to bed. And because he had released the grand jury report, the investigation into Kermit Gosnell and his abortion clinic and what had happened there. And it, I started to read it and I couldn't stop. And I stayed up all night reading it because it was so, it was so horrifying. It was so heartbreaking. The grand jury report is a police investigation and the police in their report described the abortion clinic that Kermit Gosnell ran as a house of horrors. And they weren't exaggerating. What he did in that clinic was unbelievably horrific. So he was a late-term abortionist, but he actually broke the law because you were not permitted under the law in Philadelphia to do what he did. And what he did was he specialised in late-term abortion. So he would perform abortions right up almost until birth. But very often he would birth the babies alive and he would kill the babies after they were born. And how would he kill the babies? Sometimes he killed them by stabbing them in the back of the neck with his scissors. And we know this because the grand jury report gathered evidence from people who worked in the clinic and who saw this at first hand. And they saw, they talked about the way that Cosnell joked about this, that he talked about babies who were big enough to walk into the bus stop, that he joked about babies who were wriggling, crying, breathing on the table as he was killing them. It was, sometimes he snipped their spinal cords. These were the kind of things that you just cannot imagine happening. You know, the, the kind of horror that you just cannot imagine how much cruelty that to be in somebody's heart to allow them to do this and to do it repeatedly again and again and again. And I know it doesn't matter when the baby is killed, but why did he birth the babies and then choose to kill them as opposed to performing a standard abortion, killing the baby in the womb? Well, that's not altogether clear, I think, from the, from the case and, and from the report, but it's most likely because very often if you're performing a very late-term abortion, Sometimes the digioxin won't, won't kill the child. Sometimes, perhaps, I might not want to use it because it's, it might be an, ex, an expensive procedure. The drug might be costly. He, he was actually investigated by the police, not because of what he was doing as an abortionist, but because they suspected, and they were correct, that he was selling drugs as, an, as a side trade, if you like, in the abortion clinic. And they did a raid on the clinic to, to see what was happening there. And when they raided the clinic, so they went in looking for evidence that drugs were been sold in the clinic, prescription drugs, but they have been sold without prescription to people in the locality. And they found this house of horrors. They found a filthy, filthy clinic. Women had become infected. When they looked into the records, they found that women had become infected, had contracted venereal diseases because instruments weren't cleaned. They were animals, cats, rats, feces, urine throughout the clinic. Some of the things that, that made, that really horrified, these are seasoned policemen and women. These are people, officers who are well used to seeing crime scenes, but this is so disturbing for them. They found glass jars full of aborted babies' feet. And to this day, nobody really understands this. Almost like a trophy or some kind of a macabre collection. Um, unborn babies who had been killed. And the photos in the grand jury report, like I will never, you know, to the day I die, forget them. These and babies had been kept in fridges, wrapped in plastic bags, and kept in fridges in the clinic, in this filthy abortion clinic. Here's the really astonishing thing. The clinic was almost never inspected. Because in 1993, the local authorities passed an ordinance, more or less saying that abortion clinics should never be inspected. They were so lightly regulated. You were more likely to be inspected and visited and regulated if you were in nail salon. 
in Philadelphia than if you were in an abortion clinic. And it was a purely, and the grand jury report stated this, it was a purely political decision because they thought that any kind of inspection, any kind of oversight was a barrier to women's right or their ability to get an abortion. So Kermit Gosnell carried on this practice for I think almost two decades in Philadelphia where he was doing these appalling things Nobody inspected him, nobody watched him. Even when some reports were made about the clinic, nobody followed it up. And so what became of Gosnell? How was he found out? So he what was, happened? He was, uh, when, when the police discovered this house of horrors and a major the investigation took place and he was eventually brought to trial. And he was charged with the murder, not just of babies who had been born alive and then killed by Gosnell, but with many, with many other things, some of which he had people working for him in the clinic who weren't medically qualified. He was charged with contributing to the death of a woman in the clinic and found guilty of that, so as being found guilty of the of the murder of three newborn babies. And some of the evidence that the, the staff who worked in the clinic gave, like again, was just simply horrifying. So this was a huge story. You know, and this is where people then the where we come on to the whole topic of the movie and how the movie was made. Because clearly this was, you know, as Anne McElhenney and Fela McAleer, who made the movie Gosnell and wrote, wrote the book about Gosnell, said this was like America's most prolific serial killer. He was somebody who was just routinely killing babies and it contributed to the death of at least one woman. And, it was, you know, there's an old story in the media, if it bleeds, it leads. So very often, the more horrific or gory a story is, whether we like it or not, that dictates how much the media will cover it. At Kermit Gosnell's trial, you had people giving this compelling, horrifying evidence. And one local journalist went to call the trial. And he took a photo because at the trial, there were three or four wide seats reserved for benches, reserved for the media. And they were and empty. And they were empty. So they looked, he took that photo, he put it up on Twitter, and it went completely viral. Everybody said, what's going on here? Why, why is nobody covering this trial? And then a journalist from Fox News eventually covered it and kind of shamed the rest of the mainstream media into giving it some kind of coverage. And I'm saying, like, some kind of coverage. No, nothing like the kind of coverage they would give in any other situation to this. This man who not only killed babies, but also endangered women, broke the law in every possible way he could because he was an abortionist, because he, you might interfere with the mantra that every abortion is a good abortion, the media didn't want to cover it. So Anne McElhenney... So fast forward to the yeah, movie, yeah. Anne McElhenney and Phelan McAleer. And Phelan McAleer um, set up um, a, a crowdfunding uh, on Kickstarter. Kickstarter shut it down. So they moved to another crowdfunding uh, funding platform and they raised one and a half million dollars. I think one of the biggest demands ever raised for anything on these platforms to make a movie and a book about Kermit Gosnell. And they got some really big names involved, you know, the director of very famous films like uh, The Shape of Water, um, the lead actor Nick Kane, who was in, who played Superman. Um, a lot of a lot of big names, a lot of great great people involved in the movie, and it was released, as you said, in the US. And it's all funny because it's almost like a mirror of the trial, a mirror of this whole story. So Gosnell's released, highly anticipated, like a big story. It starts to do really well immediately in the box office. On the first weekend that it opened, it got into the top 10 in the US box office. This is almost unheard of. You know, for an independent movie that's getting no attention, the media completely ignores its release. Its release. The movie critics seem to be completely ignoring its, its release. So they have an interesting um, meme on Facebook where they're contrasting other movies that were released on the same day. And mm-hmm. you know, there's six reviews of Gosnell and 360 or whatever of other, of other movies released at the same time. But it doesn't seem to matter because just like the crowdfunding exercise they ran, people are going to watch it anyway. People are responding. People are responding. And I think people, one of the things I think we need to remember about Gosnell is this. What Gosnell did was illegal and he was tried with murder and he was charged because he, he went over the limit a little bit. He was killing babies after the cutoff point. So you, you, can, you can do to a child what Cosnell did to those children if you did it a few weeks earlier. You can do that legally. And in abortion clinics right around America, babies, late-term abortions are taking place legally. And early abortions are taking place legally. And babies are being treated with exactly the same disrespect and inhumanity as Cosnell treated those children. But I think what makes Gosnell so real for people, of course, is all the, the evidence that is there, the police photos, the reports, the evidence that, 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 that was given in the trial of, you know, the absolutely horrific way 